Hi, welcome back to my Alan Bradley PLC test bench. Today we're going to be doing the wiring on a 1756 TBCH and we're going to wire it in configuration for the 1756 IF16 in single ended current mode. So what this, here's the uh, wiring diagram. Hopefully you can see it properly. This side is all jumpered together. So what my standard is, is I have two cables, 18 gauge, two pairs, that go to this side to give us a good solid common. These are our inputs here that go from terminal 2 through terminal 36. So move that out of the way. Here is my standard wiring diagram that uh, color codes that I use for this arm. So, as you can see on here, everything's jumpered and I've got common one, common two. So, let's move over to the wiring arm itself. Move there, bring that up a little bit, and uh, back up just a bit. Again, as you can see, I use large tie wrap, same idea as the other ones, so that you can properly cinch it down without uh, damaging your hands. Now, here are my cables, and they're all, I've taken and numbered all of the heat shrink, each end, so that once the bundle is done and complete, you can find it on the other end. Now, I always bring them up a little bit extra so that the, uh, you can see there's the end of the outside insulation. You want that just inside the uh, tie wrap. And it's a matter of, these are a little finicky. But as you can see, get it up there. And... Uh, you put some pressure on it and everything is good and tight. Again, take the big flush cut. Trim it off so that there is no sharp parts to get your fingers cut out. Now the other thing you'll notice, and I'll just swing over a little bit, is the shields. Now I always take the shields and bring them, keep them out where they're accessible. I bring them to the back of the bundle, usually like four or five one side and four or five the other. And at the end, I put them all together. I think that's all of them? Yep. bring them down, twist them together, and then I splice on a green wire the same length as the cables so that the customer can terminate the shields one end or both ends depending on how they want their system wired. So again, here's our jumper bar and we'll swing back around just a bit Okay, so here's our Weedmuller 157660s. Again, the description in the in the in the uh, bottom. So pull it back just a bit and find common one and common two. Sometimes it's a little difficult. But it should be now. There's there's probably an easier way for someone to come up with and do this, but uh, this is just how I've done it. No one said I was going to be perfect. Seven. That's common two, common one, just what I thought. 
I placed them over here, didn't know whether or not they'd uh, stayed. So, I put red to five and black to common, or, and black to uh, eight. Right. So, on these ones, you can have them a little longer. So there's, I go a little bit past on both of them. Now, when you're doing the jumpered side, now whether this is for you're doing an analog card, terminal 5, and terminal 8, or pardon, terminal 7, and then on this one, uh, 27, 29. So down here, say it picks about there. Um, when you're doing your common jumpers, now whether you do it on analog or you do it on digital, um, with the jump jumper bar in place, it's always simpler to put the, the wires in first to the terminals before you tighten anything down on this side. And get in there, you. Oop. One wire per side. Seven. Okay, so take your 0.5 millimeter straight blade, snug up a little bit there, snug up a little bit there, and it works better if you hold the wires to begin with. So on these ones, when you tighten them down, again, if you over tighten them, you're going to break them. I, hear, I don't know whether you can hear that little uh, tightening sound. But once it's, it's snug, you have it enough. Just get just a, a bit more, but not a lot. And then Again, you go all the way down the terminals doing the same thing. So, that's the common side. I'll finish tightening those down. And then again, the same thing. I'll start with, in this case, wire number 8, which goes to our bottom two terminals. Again, give it a nice, nice little loop. You know, with these ones, you got a little more space to play with, and it's easier to wire it if you start from the bottom and work to the top. Turn out thirty-six. squeak that's more than enough squeak stop if it squeaks stop okay so what I'll do is I'll finish this up and when we get to the when I get to the point it's time to put the cover on We'll be back and I'll show you how I do that and what I've done to how I've terminated this down here. So, be back in a couple of minutes. Alright, we're back. So, I have the uh, arm wired and again, we do the same as we did with the other arm in the other video. Always put your leather glove on, it's so much easier on your hands. And just work it away until it's all nice and flat and will fit easily underneath the wiring cover. Now, shields. There's always been 
in all the years I've been in the trade, a discussion about shields. Now, I've taken all of the shields, put a piece of heat shrink over them, used a ferrule to do my uh, connection with my green wire for uh, using as to take down to your ground. And i take my handy heat gun, slip that on the end. And uh, just add a little heat to shrink it down. Now, I don't do a lot of work on the shield because there's always been that discussion, like I say, over the years that I've been in the trade as to whether the you ground, which end of the shields you ground, the supply end or the reading end. And in this case, all I'm going to do is leave it here and the customer can decide how they want to do it and I just make that the same length I'll go through and you know kind of smooth this out a bit but there it is it's ready to have the cover put on so this is I'm just going to redo the end of this video because I didn't realize the camera had moved on me um, when you're putting these on now, as you can see, this one's kind of over that side. You've got to make sure that all your wires are on the correct side of the jumper. Otherwise, your wiring arm will not fit properly. It should just slide nice and easy. There, that clicked in. And uh, I just got to do a little cleaning on there. And there we are. That's the new end of the video. Um, straighten those up. And is ready to go to the customer. Thanks a lot. Come back again anytime. And the next video I'm doing in the wiring arm series is on the 219 conductor into the TBCH arm for high density digital I.O. So uh, that's next in the series. Thanks a lot. Come back often. Bye.